Hey everybody, I'm going to demonstrate painting thumbnails in Krita. Uh, I have, when I hit open, a bunch of posters from um, United States public parks, um, which are a pretty good source of nice landscape paintings for good colors. And I also have this set up as a template so that you can draw your thumbnail right next to them. Uh, I'm just gonna pick one like this one with the deer. Open that up, let's take a look. Uh, you can do your painting in any program that you like. I don't really care what you use as long as you're familiar with it. And you can use, um, probably it would be best if you had a tablet that you had pressure sensitivity. But if you don't, you can even use a pixel art program if you really have to. Use whatever you can just to get this practice in. The point is to be able to reproduce the shapes and colors in these images in a very short amount of time, in a very small canvas just so that you know what's most important with image composition. So here in Krita, uh, what I can do is I can zoom in and move over to this little square up here that I've set up for painting. I can make that as big as I like. Uh, Krita's brush system, if you select the brush tool, is up here at the top. And, sorry, the next one over. If you have all categories set, then you can pick from any one of these brushes out here. You should probably, before you start any assignment or painting, get familiar with them and find your favorite ones. And then what I've done is I've tagged some of them as my favorites, and they are visible down here on the lower left-hand portion of the screen. And I prefer this brush in particular for nice kind of basic painting. I've got a layer stack over on the right-hand side just like Photoshop, and I can add new layers with this plus button. So now I can paint on top of here and not have to worry about affecting the original painting. I do want to briefly show that we can mask inside of that square in a number of different ways because that's going to be very useful. Uh, also in Krita, a feature that I like rather than switching between an eraser and a brush tool is that if I hit E, it enables eraser mode up here at the top, this little button. And now with that same brush, I can just get rid of what I painted. And I really like that for painting speed. So a number of different ways I can mask within the square. I can grab my marquee selection tool here and then just drag a square around that box. And now I'm just switch back to my brush tool and just paint. And so I didn't really mask anything. I'm just selecting this active area. And if I don't mind that marching ant selection, then this will do. This will create a nice um, space where I don't have to worry about accidentally going outside to paint. And then also if I don't like what I've done, I can always just hit the backspace key to delete everything inside of it and then try again, backspace, try again, if you really wanted to. You could do that with as many layers as you want. Uh, if that's not something that you want to do, you can also set up a transparency mask. So right now I have nothing on that layer because uh, I deleted it all. But if I come down here to the plus button right next to it, this little drop down arrow, uh, or you can right click the layer, you can go down to transparency mask. If you have a marching ant selection like this, when you hit transparency mask, it's gonna fill in everything except for that with black. And so black is not visible, white is visible. So if I paint on this layer now, the only place where paint shows up is inside the white area. Um, you can see that it collapsed the transparency mask here. If I click this tiny little arrow, then it brings it back up again. Uh, just for the sake of argument, if I get rid of that, there you can see my paint strokes going outside. Uh, let me make a layer one more time. So here's a fresh layer. I'm going to enable transparency mask this time by right clicking that coming down to I think it was yeah add transparency mask I didn't have anything selected so right now my color picker turned black and white and there's nothing here so if I paint nothing's happening if I go to my transparency mask and I paint black then that stuff will be hidden and if I were to paint white then it would be shown although you're not going to see any effect there oh there is a small effect I don't know why there shouldn't be. Oh, because I didn't pick pure white, maybe. And I'm masking slightly. Well, whatever. Um, you should really just do this with pure colors and also just do it with the selection because it's a lot easier. So I'm going to delete both of those things. And let's do this one more time. I'm going to make a new layer. Use my marquee selection. Select around here. And then I'm going to add transparency mask. So I'm all set up as long as I'm painting on my layer, not on my mask. There we go then I can paint whatever I like and I don't have to worry about it going outside the bounds. It's all inside here. E to erase. E again to go back to painting. Okay. 
So that's just a little bit of the setup. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to paint this large composition in a tiny little thumbnail. Uh, I am zooming in, but you shouldn't zoom in this far to tiny single pixel details because that's not the point. The point is to draw a small version of this large thing. Now, if you zoom in enough that where you can work nicely with your tools, you're going to find, well, you can't see the reference anymore. Up here in the right hand side, we have the overview tab in Krita. And in uh, Photoshop, there's also, I believe it's navigation pane where you can see this thumbnail. You should leave this visible. Uh, if you need to resize it a little bit, that's okay. But you should use that as a reference for what you're trying to paint. You may need occasionally to come out to color pick out in this area, or you could do that first if you like. Um, sometimes what I like to do is have a separate layer just for color selections that I know I'm going to use. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to color pick all over this image. So I'm going to pick a gray from these rocks and I'm just going to put it right next to the canvas over here. I'm going to pick the other darker gray from those rocks. I'll pick the snow. It turned out to be surprisingly dark. That's one of the reasons we're doing this. Um, I think the colors on the deer are the same as far as I can tell. I'll pick the darkest mountain color that I can see and the next lightest one and the brightest one which I think is up here mm, something like that clouds second cloud color the sky color and I'll put that one way up here so that should be about it uh, I don't see anything else that I would need, but now at least I could paint like this and not have to go all over my image if I remembered where I got those um, color picks from. And if not, then it would just be a moment's work to zoom out, color pick, and zoom back in to do my painting. Okay. So what we're trying to do is reproduce that painting uh, in brief, not trying to take a whole lot of time. Let me switch back to my proper layer so I'm painting inside the composition. Um, and I just want to get the basics down so that I understand what makes that image look like that image. Um, what is the composition of that image? What are the most important features of it? This would be like a pre-painting step or just an exercise to um, acclimatize yourself to proportions and to color differences and things like that. So to do this briefly, I want to start from the back um, portion of the image, whatever is the farthest back. So that would be the sky. So I filled that all in just now. Um, in front of that are clouds, in front of that are these hills that are pink, in front of that is our figure and our rocks. So I want to work in that order. If you feel like you have to use layers, then fine, but I would encourage you to try to not use layers if you can help it. Okay. So way back there in the sky, I've got clouds, and so I'll just put a bunch of random kind of cloudy shapes there. And then because our hills kind of cover over that, I'm just going to fill in the bottom portion mostly kind of just with white so that I don't have um, patches of blue showing through where my hills are. Then I'm going to grab the pink color. Let's try this brighter pink color and try to guess where in my image those hills are. So one right here that comes down, one over here that shoots up like that. And then they kind of meet together somewhere in the middle, and then they cover up the rest of the stuff in the painting. So I'll paint a significant amount going down. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom because you're going to cover over that, but something like this. Before I move on, I want to add little bits of shading to that because I'm going to paint right over the top of it, and it would be very difficult to do after the fact. So I'm going to grab this dark color and then just kind of fill in broad shapes that I see that create this kind of color effect. I can use transparency or I can use pen pressure to kind of get it to look a little bit more complicated. One thing I want to point out though is that um, I'm not going for 100% resemblance of the thing that I'm painting because that would take a long time and um, really that's not the point of this. I'm also not shrinking my brush size beyond what I've already done. If you can see how big my brush is here it's pretty big considering the canvas that I'm working on. I would encourage you to try to work with the biggest brush you can so that you get the broadest impression that you can. Uh, don't move down to a tiny single pixel brush. Don't move down to a small brush because that's going to miss the point of the exercise. So with that, I'm, I'm okay. I'm happy with that. I'm going to come down to my um, grayer color down here and fill in my little foreground hill, kind of like this. 
cover over all of that. And then for the trees, I'm just going to dash in a couple little blurry shapes over here, a couple little blurry shapes over here. For the deer, I'm going to fill in his body. And now I actually will shrink my brush just for this one thing, just to give him a couple little limbs and stuff like that. But we don't need to worry about detail. This doesn't have to look good. This just has to represent what was in the image. So that's enough. Okay. I'm going to bring my brush size back up again, grab my snow color, and then put a few snow bits up on the top here, kind of how they've got like that. And then I do have this darker color that I'll pepper in here and there for a little bit of understanding of where the shading is. Also on the deer, there was a little bit of shading on the underside of the deer. And then on that back leg, maybe little bits of reaches up here. That's about it. Like I'm going to just say that's pretty much done considering the um, exercise that we're doing. I'm going to try to zoom out and look at it and see, did I miss anything? Uh, let me close those. Did I miss anything that is essential to the image? Um, the only thing that I feel like I'm missing are the little bits of white in the background, which I could come back out here and then color pick off of the image like that. Come back up here. If I'm worried about messing up my image, then I can create one more additional layer on top of this just so I don't accidentally completely mess it up. That way I can paint right over the deer and then delete that stuff out. So there were just little bits of snow all over the place there that seemed to be missing. And so with that, I'm gonna hit my eraser tool, get rid of anything that crosses over or goes outside, and then Control E to merge down. And now these two are one, and we would just say that's that. So that's what I'm looking for, just a really basic, quick representation of the image. Um, the goal isn't to be sloppy. The goal isn't to be careful. It's to just look at what makes that image that image. What makes the composition work? The basic, big, broad shapes. So for instance, I'm going to make one more layer just to show what I'm talking about. In the background, from the top of the frame, there's a line created here for the mountains. And that's an important line because it changes the sky shape into the background shape. Okay, In the foreground, there's this shape created by the rocks. And that's an important shape because it differentiates the foreground from the background or the middle ground. Right? Those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. In addition to what is the color contrast, like how dark exactly is the deer body from the middle ground or the background. Um, what colors, how much saturation are we getting in these pink cliffs compared to like these pink clouds over here? That's the broadest level of interpretation of an image. Just where is everything? How big is it? Um, what sort of shapes does it create? How does it divide space? And what color and, and value is it? Okay, so that's the assignment is just to do uh, four of these, four of these little thumbnail drawings. You saw how fast that was. It shouldn't take you very long to do. I'm going to do one more without going slowly, just to show that we can really crack a bunch of these out pretty quickly. Uh, I'll do, this one's very interesting. It's got a lot of colors, so that might cause me to um, work a little bit harder. So here's this nice, you know, Arizona National Park uh, sort of thing. I didn't crop these posters properly, by the way. I just got them into a nice, consistent shape and size. So the text might fall off the, the sides. Don't worry about the text at all. Just worry about the image. So I'm going to zoom way into my thumbnail, grab my marquee tool, mark this out like that. I'm going to make a new layer and then add a transparency mask to it. Okay. And then with my brush tool, I'm just going to start painting. So I'm going to come back out here and grab the sky color. And I'll actually make my brush significantly larger for this first step or two. So I'm going to fill in the sky. And then we have like this darkish purple, which fills up basically the whole rest of the bottom of the composition, kind of like this. And we've got these clouds up in the top here which sort of chop up 
that space and these kind of diagonal lines, these interrupted chaotic kind of shapes like that. If I want to go back and forth, then I can grab the sky color one more time and go back up towards the top, but it doesn't really matter. We're not going for a super high amount of detail. Then all throughout the back, we've got these really bright kind of like salmon colored cliffs. And so I'm gonna grab the brightest color and just kind of look at what, what shapes are being created here. They're sort of like trapezoid shapes. They're sort of kind of triangular a little bit. There's a, a line of them that comes like down this way towards the bottom of the image. So just dabbing in a bunch of those. And when I press lightly, I even get the colors that are um, represented right next to those brightest spots. So if you're clever, you can kind of pick like the highest intensity color sometimes, and then just press lightly and you'll get the other colors around it without having to color pick all the time. You can see even with these steps, it's already starting to look like that image. Let me grab the darkest color then. So this bright blue is one where right in the middle here, and I'm trying to leave my brush as large as I can. There's this really big bright blue area. There's some lighter kind of blue areas in the top. There's a really dark one down here. Actually, a lot of blue down here. And so I should probably start like just covering over that area. And then there's even darker shapes. So I'll grab this really dark color. And there's this kind of shape down here. I can see it gets broken up and there's this grayer shape that I missed before. So I'll grab these gray colors kind of cuts up that way and this way. There's a little bit over here as well. And so we'll just say that's fine for now. A little bit of that salmon pink coming back over in here. So now I'll grab the yellow finally for this cliff face that I've been ignoring so far. And it's pretty big, it fills in this whole area over here, something like that. And now I'm just kind of checking proportions to see, am I doing okay? I didn't really get some of this um, orange in here, so I want to fill that in. I missed some of that. Again, trying to leave my brush the same size, not bring it down. There's a little bit of orange in the background there. I can push things over by sampling colors next to it and just painting a little bit more. So like I need to push that back just a little bit so it doesn't quite hit this horizon line up there. Um, that's about fine. And now we'll grab the dark green and at this point, I can fill in this large shape with this large brush, but I'm going to have a lot of trouble filling in those little areas with this brush. I'll try, but then maybe I do need to shrink my brush a little bit and just pepper in some little, little bits here. There's some texture to that cliff face as well. We've got like this darkish red. So if I bring my brush back up just a little, I can make some small stripes there. And there's even some white or very light yellow right here, something like that. So then I want to come back and see, did I miss anything? There are some light shapes in the very back that I missed um, that I think it's that the sun is hitting the tops over there or something like that. So I do want to put those in because it gives it a little bit of extra depth. Um, beyond that, I'm pretty happy with that if I zoom back out again. It basically looks like the composition. All of the major forms, lines, and shapes are observed there. Um, I'm missing a little bit of extra color on the foreground green. So, oops, let me zoom back in. Just a little bit of extra dark stuff down here in this corner that I didn't have. But other than that, I would pretty much just call that done and then move on to the next one. So really, you want to take about like 10 minutes at the most to do this sort of thing. Get all the major forms, work from back to front, color pick your colors, and try to go for the boldest colors if you know that you're going to mix them with a brush that has transform, uh, transparency transfer. And that will help you kind of learn how to dissect an image and understand what makes it the way it is. Um, no need to measure super carefully. Try to do it estimated by eye. And once you get about halfway through it, evaluate and see if you need to adjust something. If you get right towards the end and you see that you made some major mistake, um, your choices are basically you can either start over again 
or you can leave it that way and learn from it in the next one. Uh, I'm not going to be very picky about how I grade all of your guys' work on this. I just want to see that you gave it a good try and that you were not obsessing over tiny details and that you weren't just grabbing two colors and slashing them straight through and not giving it any consideration at all. So I'll give you an example just to be fair about something that I would not like. Okay, So here I've got my composition and I'm going to fill it with blue and I'm not going to crop it to the square. I won't like that. Okay, Try to make sure that you crop it to the square. And then I'm going to grab dark blue. I'm going to go like this. Just fill it in. And then I'm going to grab like orange. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to grab yellow. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to call it done. So I would hate that. Okay, it doesn't show any kind of real attempt to make these shapes or proportions. It's just kind of where the color arrived in the image in like the broadest possible way. Even if you went through and like erased out the sides to make this a little bit more square, I can still kind of tell like there's there's no real attempt to understand this image present in this. So don't do that. Um, similarly, don't come in. Let's turn this one back on. Don't come in with um, an eyedropper tool and get your brush really, really small and try to fill in every single last little silhouette shape. See, now my brush is down to the size of like a single pixel. And then I can come in and look and go, oh, there's a little bit of green right there. And there's one right here. And there's one right here and right here and right here and right here. This is too much detail. You're wasting time. It's just going slower now. You're not really going to perfectly reproduce this image without hours of work. And I don't want you to put in hours of work on this. I just want you to understand the basic shapes. So at this point where I'm filling in all these tiny details, going very carefully and methodically, I'm not even zoomed in, but it's still obsessive, right? Don't do that. I don't need that level of detail like there. I just need it to broadly show the basic shape of the painting, all right? Four of those. You can do them on four separate images if it's convenient, or you can edit them together if you like. Um, but four of those little thumbnail paintings and just save them over top the templates that I provide. Uh, have fun and ask questions if you need to. Bye, guys.